everybody, we're here today to make uh, Cornish pasties. Merrily's father, Don, my uh, father-in-law, used to make these all the time. They're his recipe, except for the peas that you'll see. Merrily, could you um, pan over here? We've bought our pastry. Okay, a lot of people make their own, but to make it easier and quicker, we've bought pastry. I like the puff pastry better, and Merrily likes the short cust. We've got regular mince. As you can see, again, $5 a kilo, great deal. Uh, parsnip, carrots, spuds, onion, swede, peas, pumpkin, salt, pepper, and parsley, a bit of milk for a wash to glaze it over at the end, and also our food processor. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of preparation time. We'll come back to you when a lot of that food's ready to go. Just before we start the wazzing process, just to show you here, we've got the pastry out a bit earlier, so it defrosts a bit. It'll make it easy to make the pasties, the pasties later on. Um, Merrily's just pointing out to me that um, grand, um, father-in-law Don Merrily's dad, Don, used to make these. He comes from Broken Hill and they're a popular uh, thing up there at the hill. Um, these aren't traditional Cornish pasties, but they are a staple food up there at the hill. Great place. Hello to everybody up there, especially Auntie Sue and Uncle David. Okay, have a look here. Got everything chopped up reasonably the same size. I'm not going to show you through the whole food processing, processing process, but I will show you a part of it. So I'm just going to grab different bits of different food here. So spuds, swede, uh, a bit of pasta if I can find some down there. A bit of carrot, a bit of pumpkin. All right, just get that up together. A few, few bits more, but not too much more. See how that's not over full? Okay, get that down in there. Pop it up. Okay, have a look in there, everybody. Have a look how fine that is. Okay, I'm going to tip that out into our big mixing bowl. I'll do all of the rest of that and blend that up, but that's the fineness and the size you look at after so you can make the pasties, okay? Hi, everybody. Have a look now. All of the vegetables have been chopped up in the food processor. They're lovely and fine. Okay, have a look at that all the way through. Nice and consistent size as some of it goes flying. Okay, now I'm going to put the mince in it and put a few condiments. So, we've got our kilogram of mince here. Australian with that. Obviously taking off the moisture pad down the bottom. Straight in with the mince, okay. Now we're going to have some salt and some pepper. And some parsley. Quite a bit because there's a lot of food here. I might just top up with a bit more salt. Okay, and now you've got to mix that all together. So I'll start mixing that together and get that all together. It's the only way you can get this all through. As I said, this will take a while. I won't bore you pointless. Come back to you shortly. Okay, it's time to make the pasties. Please have a look at that merrily. That's the um, uh, mixture all done together. Salt, pepper, all the, all the vegetables, meat. I've thrown in a few peas in there just for a bit of greenery. Okay, we're going to show you how to make one pasty all the way through and then we'll come back to you and show you the completed product. So this is puff pastry, which is my preferred choice, as you can see. We don't see the uh, need to make them circular. Traditionally, Parker stars, these are circular. As you can see, the pastry sheets come square, so we just make them square. So it's as simple as grabbing your pasty mix. There you go for that for quantity of Maryland. Does that look all right, right? A bit more. Okay, a bit more. A bit longer. If you can see that, I've shaped that to be basically a rectangle, nice and high. Okay, so now, this way with the pastry. Separate it from its plastic. All the way across there. Now, watch what I do here. I'm gonna take that there and crimp that so it comes in over like that at the end of the pasty. Put that back over there, I think, with David. Crimp that there. And then also seal it off at this end. Okay. Now, use your fork, crimp that off like this. I'll come around here and do it sideways so you can see what I'm doing on this end. Make sure this is all done too. And okay. a couple of air holes. Okay, yep, got those coming. So there's my uh, milk ready to go. Couple of air holes, carefully selected. So you can see that that's a nice secure pasty now, now ready to go. You grab the brush here with your milk, pretty much glaze that over and that'll create a lovely golden brown when that gets cooked. All right, so that's how you make our version of pasties or dad's version of pasties. Okay, we'll now go through the whole process of making these all together and come back to you and show you, but that's the finished product. There you go, that goes straight into an oven at 180.
Okay, everybody, there's nine pasties that you've made. What we've made, you can see here we've got the mixture of the short cut, short cut and the puff pastry, all been glazed with milk, all got air holes in them. They're all about to go in the oven now. So we'll whack them in the oven. And as you can see, I've come over here. We've got our oven preheated to 175 because it's a stupid bloody thing and it won't go to 180. Okay, there's one tray. There's the second that's in the bottom shelf. And the, one of the beauties of this setup is that we've got a secondary oven down here that's also been preheated to 180. Marilyn, what do you reckon? 40 minutes to 50 minutes for those? Yeah, that keep that an eye on them until they're nice and golden brown. Yep. Okay, so that's our Cornish pasties. Well, sorry, Dad's pasties. We'll come back to you and show them when, when they're finished. And we've still got a few more to go. This mix will make anywhere from 10 to a dozen. Yeah, something like that. So we've got a few more to go and finish those off. Hello everyone, you can now see that our pasties are done. These two on the left are the puff pastry and this is the short crust. You can see the differences between the two. The smell coming off them is just beautiful. It's really, really, really good food. Terrific tuck up. Lots of thanks to Don and Merrily for showing me the dish. I, I love these things, I really do. And again, thanks to our father-in-law and dad, Don, who um, sort of inspired this. Miss you a lot and, uh, and I hope you're looking down on these with, a, uh, with good favour.